Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're working on our Deadpool Funko Pop character. In this video we'll be looking at texture painting. If you want to know more about texture painting then do look at my introduction to texture painting playlist in the description. Do also check out the playlist on my channel for other great courses and the links to my character course which takes you from nothing right through to a game ready character with rigging animation ready for a game engine. Okay, so here's where we got up to last time. Now we're halfway set up for texture painting because we've got our UVs mapped out and ready to go. We can now go up to the texture painting workspace at the top here. So click on that. And whatever was the active object is now in texture paint mode. If you look here, we're in texture paint mode just there. So if I zoom in a touch, you can see that the wristbands are now purple. The reason they're purple is that they have a missing texture. And if I try and paint now, it will say missing materials or texture detected. So we haven't got a texture to paint onto. So the first thing we can do, and you don't have to do it in this order, but this is just how I'm explaining it. We can go across and add a new texture. So over here, we've got new texture. We can press the plus sign and base color. I'll call this Deadpool Color. I'll change the texture size. I'll double it. Unfortunately, we can't use 4K textures at the moment. That's really buggy within Blender. It is for me anyway. So we can go to the end here and press times two, press enter. We can then actually click and drag and pull that down. So it's both 2048 by 2048 and press enter. We can take the alpha off because that's the transparency. We're not going to use that. And also we can give it a base color of red. We can be rough at this point because we can change this later, but just pull it down somewhere around the reds. Okay, once that's set up, we can press okay. And that's changed the color of the wristbands. Now, in order to see what's going on, I'm going to click and drag a new window down here. You don't have to do this, but I find it very helpful. And then I'm going to change this to the shader editor. So there's the new material created. I'll press N to get rid of the toolbar and zoom in on this a touch. So here's our Deadpool color texture that we just added. And it's created a new material for us. I'm going to call this Deadpool. And I want all the other objects to have the same material. So we can paint on this one texture map here. Then if we want to send it to a game engine, we only have the one texture map that we need to set up and it's nice and easy. And also it's all unwrapped in one texture space. So again, we can use just one material for the whole object, which is nice and simple. So in order to link them up, I need to be in object mode. So I can change from texture paint mode to object mode up here. And I can just press control L and link materials and it links the materials from the active object, which was our wristbands here, and puts it all over everything. Okay, now one strange thing about Blender is when you go into the texture painting workspace, it puts you in solid viewport shading. And actually we want to be in material preview mode so we can get a good idea of what these materials are going to look like. But we probably need to bring in a reference image as well, so I'll bring this out and bring the outliner down, and let's change this to the image editor. I'm going to open up my Deadpool reference. Just search Deadpool Funko Pop on Google. I'll zoom out and in there, and you'll come up with something very similar to this. What we will need to do is just scroll across the top here and there's a pin. Just make sure it's pinned. That way when we change objects and things, it won't change the texture here. And I'll just zoom out just a touch more. Okay, so we're ready to do some actual texture painting. With my wristband selected, we'll start with those because they're nice and simple because they're completely black. I'll go back into texture paint mode. And you can see our Deadpool color appears there and it's really bright red. And now we can actually get the correct red. I can use the image editor over here and fill it in with a closer red to Deadpool over here. So I'll go to the fill brush and that changes my brushes down here and I'll scroll down until we get to the color. Now I can click on the color and then I can use my pipette or eyedropper and choose a color from Deadpool. So let's try and find a mid red somewhere around there, I reckon. And let's try filling in the color over here. We can't do it on here because it will only fill the wristband in. So that's close, but it's not quite vivid enough. So we can just adapt this slightly, or we can use the pet again and try and find a closer color, maybe that one there, and fill it in over here. I'll just make my color wheel bigger so you can see it. That's control middle click and move up and down. Let's just keep trying to get as close as we can. And I think that's pretty much it. It's not as easy as it looks to judge that, but we'll get there. What you might want to do is try and adapt the roughness as well at this point. Probably bring it down just a touch to get that more plasticky look. But I'm finding actually 0.48 is about right, really. Okay, so let's start painting our actual objects. 
So for that, we don't paint in here, we paint in the actual viewport. I need to make sure I save this color though, so I'll scroll down just a touch into the color palette, new color palette, and then click on the plus sign there. That will keep that red for me, which will make my life much easier. Let's now go to the black, so I'll bring this all the way down, it goes into the middle of the black, and I'll press the plus sign to have that on the palette as well. And let's go to the white and add that. So we've got my three colors for Deadpool. And if I use the fill brush in here, with the black selected and fill in, we can fill in the wristband. Now, if I want to fill in any of the other objects, like the foot straps here, I can't just click on the foot straps. That's actually trying to fill in the wristbands again. I need to be able to quickly select the foot strap. Now, the way to do that is to go into object mode, select the bands for the feet, back into text paint mode, and then we can fill that in. Make sure we've got the black selected down here, which we have, and then we can fill that in using our fill brush. That's quite a long-winded way of doing it. A quicker way is to go to edit and turn off lock object modes. That way we can alt left click on objects and anything under the cursor, we have to kind of choose which one it is. I should label my objects a bit better. And now we've got this sort of pack here. Now I prefer to keep things uh, black and red, but you can choose a brown if you like. I'm still in object mode and I need to change the text paint mode. So now when I alt left click on something that previously had the texture paint mode enabled, so this foot strap, for example, it's changed into texture paint mode. So I should be able to go back to this pack here. I can now go between these two and they are in texture paint mode. Let's just check that I've got that black color and let's fill that in with the black. So I can go around my objects, just make sure they're in texture paint mode and fill them in as I see fit. For the eyes, you probably want smooth shading, so I suggest going back to object mode, right click, shade smooth, and then back into texture paint mode. I've just noticed I've turned off the subdivision surface modifier for this, so I'll just go into the modifiers and make sure they're both turned on, the bevel and the subdivision surface modifier, before painting it, back into texture paint mode, and back to the brushes and make sure I've got black enabled, Okay, now there's a slight glitch here and you'll find this occasionally that you'll get glitches. If you ever get that, then go back to the UV editing, zoom in on that object and make sure sync selection is on and then try and find if there's any overlap. So just have a good check around, make sure there's no overlap. That all seems fine. I'll press N to get my toolbars and turn off the stretching and then just have a look and see what the problem is. And you can see that the fill brush hasn't actually filled in this section. There's a couple of ways of sorting this out. Let's go back to texture paint mode and we can go to brush mode here and literally just brush over that section. F to resize your brush. Oh, I've got white turned on again and then paint in black to make sure that covers it all. And can you see here, I'm just making sure those edges are covered or we can come onto here and start painting as well to F to resize the brush, and it's just not quite getting it. And that's probably due to the fact that I've got a subdivision surface modifier on, and it's distorting the shape quite a lot. Again, there's a couple of ways around this. One, you can apply your modifiers, and therefore the UVs will be splayed out how they should be. Or again, you can just paint them in here and make sure you just go over everything. And that's why it's good to have a nice big island margin. I'm still not quite getting that red bit there. So this probably will need a subdivision surface applied to it. So I'll go back into object mode and I think I'll just apply the modifiers. So apply the bevel with one segment and the subdivision surface modifier with just one on the viewport and that'll be fine. If I go into edit mode now, you can see the UVs and I'll just select them there so you can see them. And you can see they're in exactly the same place as the old one, there's just more of them. And now let's try going back to texture paint mode and filling it in. Let's make sure we've got black selected though. And that's done at this time. So because the UVs were so far from the subdivision surface modifier, that was making a bit of a difference. Okay, so I'm gonna go around blocking out those black colors. One last tip that can be really useful if you scroll down, down to the options here, the bleed is at two pixels at the moment. So if I go into edit mode for the shape that I've just done, and let's just find a section of that in our image editor, you can see that the bleed is going two pixels out. But actually putting that up would be really helpful. So let's go back into texture paint mode 
scroll down to that bleed option and putting that up to something like four and then using the fill brush we'll push that out even further and then we won't get any glitches what you have to worry about though is whether it's going to overlap with the ones around it we can actually put this up a fair bit we can put it up to about six because our islands are nice and separate okay so the last bit then is to just do the detailed sections the body and the face so alt left click on the body into texture paint mode and for this one I'm going to use my graphics tablet so I'm going to come away from the fill brush and over to the normal brush let's just scroll down and make sure we've got the black selected and if I come up to here I've got the brush properties so the strength is set to one at the moment my pressure sensitivity is on but I'm actually going to turn that off because I want it to be full pressure when I'm painting as you can see there and shift F will change that strength and F is to resize the brush and I can now start coming in and painting. Now if I start painting now, it only appears on one side, so I'll undo that, and I'll come across the top here, and you've got X mirror there. If I press that, it will come on both sides. Now we can start painting the detail, and just roughly get the design. Don't worry about being a bit rough at this stage. If you need to, you can isolate your objects with forward slash, and I can just go back to the red and sort of rub things out with that if things need sharpening up. Okay, that's pretty much working there. Let's go to the head. So I can alt left click on that, into texture paint mode, and just try and get the head shape. Just work on the outside first, make sure you get that right. If your stroke's a little bit wobbly, you can come down to the stroke option and turn on stabilize stroke and that can smooth it out and help you get smoother lines. It does depend a little bit on your processing power though, and it can take quite a bit of getting used to. If you turn down the factor, it will make it smooth still, but not quite as influential. I actually don't find it particularly good within Blender. I find it quite laggy and problematic, so I don't usually have that enabled. Once you've got the rough shape, then you can go in and start tidying up the details. If you alt left click, that will zoom in on a certain area and then you've got more control of your camera. Okay, the last item I think is the belt. It has a sort of design on it, which you can see there. So alt left click, that's the cylinder for me and Alt middle click to zoom in on that object. You can isolate faces by going to edit mode, choosing some faces, and then back to texture paint mode and use this button here, this paint mask. I'll press Control I actually to select the inverse and fill this in with red. So with my fill brush, select the red and fill it in. Then Control I to select the inverse and I've got the inside there. The problem is it's slightly glitchy, as you can see there. It doesn't do a superb job, so sometimes you have to patch it up yourself. So back to the brush tool, out of that texture mask option, and then zoom in a bit. Can you see how when I zoom in, I get a bit of clipping? You can change that if I press N, go to view, and clip start, just put a zero before the one there, so 0 0.01, press N again, and now I can zoom in a lot closer. And there we have him, our Deadpool character. One really important thing to do at this stage is to go image and save. Find a suitable location and press save, and he's all ready now. Let me know how you're getting on in the comments below. And until next time, thanks for watching, and I hope this helps.